Hello and welcome to episode 6 of Fireworks in the Real World. Okay, so we've done some wireframing, we've done some mood boards. Before we get on with the kind of main design job of doing our pet shop site, I thought we could spend a little bit of time just looking at a couple of the tools and niceties that Fireworks has to offer us in terms of design. So let's create a new file a minute. Just want a little file for having a little play around to start with. I'm just going to look at some of the, um, some of the tools that I love um, in Fireworks, which actually have helped me kind of work just better than in other packages like Photoshop. Now I'm going to start with my favourite tool. Now my favourite tool is the sort of lowly rounded rectangle. And I love it because because it's just so flexible and easy to use. If you've got a round, um, if you've got to create a kind of set of tabs, for example, and you wanted them to have rounded corners or rounded boxes, now this is a great tool. Um, what's nice about it is you you drag the tool on, and you see you have a number of um, yellow handles. Um, we can interact with those handles and we can click on them and we can drag the radius of the corner which is pretty neat and easy what I also love is the fact that if you hold down alt you can change each corner individually which is lovely and now best of all you've got the resize so that keeps that keeps those corner radius is the same and means you can change the size and dimensions of the box and that's just really really nice to use and you know uh, that's just saved me so much time I found myself in Photoshop before um, you know actually adding corner section bitmaps to round off corners um, and having to resize them and you know ended up with all kinds of horrible stretchy messes and having to redo it all so I love the fact that that tool is there to make life easy. Now the next thing I love is the um, fill options in Fireworks. In particular I love the gradient tool. Now what's particularly good about it, and let's just have, let's just stick some uh, particular colours in, that'll do. Uh, okay, let's, oops, missed, let's go to dark blue. Okay, so we can, we can create some subtle shading. What I like is the fact that we, um, I think I'll group those together. We have an interactive uh, gradient handle here. So we can actually move it around and see what effect it has. We can move the origin of the fade and the end point and see directly you know, the kind of visual effect we're creating. That's really nice. So all our objects have that um, little mechanism, the two two point shady tool. Whenever you've selected the the linear gradient or radial gradient tool, well, there's a whole bunch of tools for um, gradients. Um, so if I select satin again, we have the same options, and you really get a feel of how how the tool works and what the algorithm is by fiddling around with those uh, those handles. Okay, so we probably wouldn't um, use that particular shading. Um, we'd probably go for something a lot more subtle. Um, <laughs> for example, that just adding a little bit of the curve, the radius in that um, shading type. Okay, so the next thing, um, really, really handy and quick. I mean, the fact that these are vector items um, makes them a lot, it's a lot more lightweight in terms of the file size. I love the fact we can simply group these together. So I can either click each one with uh, the shift key or click and drag, then a right click group. So I like the fact it's very simple and fast to, to create groups. And I use Apple G or um, Control G on a PC. I can press Apple T to just resize those, duplicate them, and you know, and add things to my group, which I can then move around as a as an entirety. And that that 
it helps me build up uh, modules really quickly. So if I was mocking up a page uh, with a uh, lot of list of news items, very quick to just create very fast groups, copy and paste, or um, duplicate them down the page. Or of course you can use um, the symbol to make sure that if you do need to have them all the same and you change one of them, they all change. But quite often you put in actual real content and each one's different, so the symbol that I've shown before isn't always you know it's not always appropriate. So other things we can do if we just zoom into our one of our tabs. So we looked at the gradient tool. Um, just ungroup those. So I'm just using one tab. Some very nice useful textures on the texture um, drop down menu. I've shown this before. Um, some of these are much more useful than others. It has to be said. I quite often like I like the grid options here, and they can be applied subtly so you can just slide the uh, percentage down or up and depending on the colors the transparent option can uh, make a difference as well other control in here is just um, how how it renders the edge of the object so hard takes the anti-aliasing off the corners and um, that can be um, quite often if we just use a normal rectangle you might find that it, when the when you've resized rectangles, that the if it's on anti-alias, some of the edges aren't quite as um, fine as they should be. So other things we can do down in this panel, um, we looked at the gradient tool. This is the just solid flat color shading option. That's no shading at all, so that is actually transparent now. Also has a transparent um, stroke edge edge line. So we can't see it. Let's put one of those on. So the only other option left is this option here, which um, is a, another kind of pattern. Whereas these are kind of simple black and white textures, these are kind of proper bitmap patterns. Now again, we have um, resizing handles, which allows us to change the scaling of the tiling of that pattern. And we've got a whole set of patterns to choose from. Again, you know, these are some of them might be useful for something. A lot of them are a bit over the top, and you could end up with a really hideous design if you use them badly. Could be complete overkill. Some of the metal textures can be quite nice. You can also change the angle of them. Hmm, I'm not quite sure why that one isn't showing anymore. Maybe it doesn't like being at an angle. So that's that could be used quite nicely. Oh, I see it was just because it was behind the texture Let's turn the texture down so you can have texture and pattern and actually come up with some pretty complicated um, fill techniques using a combination of the, all these fill options okay so what else do we have in this panel down here well the next thing we've I just showed you we have the line work options here so each of the objects um, the the vector objects has a, an outline so we can change the color we can change the width, type it in or use the slider. Then we have a whole set of different brushes for that line work. So we start off with a basic brush. I think it's either hard or, yeah, it's the hard brush. So you can change it to the soft brush, which rounds off the corners. There's a whole set of um, calligraphy brushes. You'll see the little preview on each one, which is very handy. And most of these you can only really get a full effect if you make them a lot wider but they can be handy um, for coming up with new um, kind of effects line effects some of them are a bit silly there's some uh, confetti options and dots and things but as with anything else you can find creative ways to use it all so let's just um, have a look at the other options down here let's put the line work back to something sensible um, perhaps not that thick. So we've got options here to put the uh, the line, the stroke, either on the inside of the object, the center, so the edge of the object would be about there, or on the outside of the object, which can be useful um, for different applications. Um, say if you're trying to line up your images in columns, you know you you would want the line. If, if your photograph was the width of your guidelines of your um, your grid, you'd want the line work on the inside so it all fitted nicely. 
Uh, other things down here, you can preview the shape of the uh, the stroke itself. So if we were on a calligraphy pen, we can see it's a, a kind of diagonal shape. And this is a kind of smoothing factor or kind of bleed at the edge of the of the pen, which can be good for you know, um, just refining that 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 stroke. We can also apply the same kind of um, textures to the to the brush. And again, we can make that however uh, subtle or unsubtle we choose. And the last option is the roundness. Not sure if we're going to see that. It's just how it rounds the corners. So put that up. You'll see it's rather than um, hard angled corners. We've now got nicely rounded corners. And you can do it in pixels as well as percentages. Okay, well this um, well we'll look at this panel next time because it's actually a lot more involved than it looks. It looks quite simple, but there's a lot of power hidden in here. So we'll look at that in the next episode.